Today we're going to start working with something that really is at the heart of calculus, and that is the question, what is a derivative? And simply put, the derivative can be thought of as the rate of change. Calculus is the study of change. How fast are things changing? What happens as things change? How is your account growing over time? And that rate of change can be measured in uh, two different ways. Uh, one way is we can think about it as the slope of the tangent line. Or another way we can think about it is the instantaneous rate of change. Graphically, what this looks like is we've got some curve, and we want to know how fast it's changing at a certain point. To measure that rate of change, we draw a tangent line and say that kind of measures how steep the curve is at that certain point. And then at a different point, that tangent line is going to have a different steepness, showing a different instantaneous rate of change. And there's a couple ways that we notate what the derivative is, largely because calculus was developed by two mathematicians independently. And they both use different notations. And both notations are still used today. So if the function f of x is a function then the derivative is notated as either f prime of x or dy dx or sometimes we just put the prime right on the y, y prime. And that notation means we're interested in the derivative or the rate of change. And the formula for the derivative, we'll just use f prime of x here, is that instantaneous rate of change formula we saw in our previous chapter. The limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. That is the definition of the derivative, a formula that we should already be familiar with, but we will continue to get more familiar with as we try a few examples. So let's try a few examples where we have to calculate the derivative. Let's start with the function f of x equals 5x minus 8. To calculate the derivative, we'll use our formula that says we're going to take the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And so replacing that x with the x plus h, we end up with the limit as h goes to 0 of 5 times x plus h minus 8. And then we're going to subtract the entire function. And as we know from instantaneous rate of change, that has to go in parentheses, 5x minus 8 all over h. We'll simplify by doing a little distributing of both the 5 and the negative sign. That'll give us the limit as h goes to 0 of 5x plus 5h minus 8 minus 5x plus 8 all over h. And when we do that, we can look for things that go to 0, like 5x minus 5x and a minus 8 plus 8. So we're just left with the limit as h goes to 0 of 5h over h, which is really nice because those h's can finally divide out. We're just left with the 5. Since there's no h's left, that is our derivative. That is the slope of the tangent line. That is the rate of change for the function 5x 
minus 8. Let's do one more example. Let's try a fraction problem. Let's do f of x equals 10 over x. And the derivative, f prime of x, is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So again, we're going to replace the x with x plus h to get the limit as h goes to 0 of 10 over x plus h minus the original function, 10 over x, all over the h. Well, we've seen fractions inside of fractions before. We know to get rid of them, we multiply by the common denominator of x times x plus h on both the top and the bottom. And I'll go ahead and distribute through the numerator x times x plus h. And after reducing, we end up with the limit as h goes to 0 of 10x minus 10 times x plus h all over hx x plus h. Distributing the 10 through, we end up with the limit as h goes to 0 of 10x minus 10x minus 10h all over h, x, x plus h, which again, we get that nice situation where the 10x and the 10x subtract to 0. So we have the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 10h over h, x times x plus h. And now we can divide out those h's leaving behind the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 10 over x times x plus h. Well, now that we've removed that discontinuity, we can plug 0 into the h. And when we do, we get negative 10 over x times x, which becomes x squared. And so our derivative of 10 over x is negative 10 over x squared. And this measures the rate of change. As x changes, this formula will tell us the rate of change or the slope of the tangent line at any given point. Now, one thing we notice is this formula does take a little bit of a while to crank out. And you can imagine if the problems became more complex, this formula can quickly become very ugly very fast. And so what we like to use whenever possible are shortcuts. And one of the most common shortcuts we'll use is the polynomial shortcut. The polynomial shortcut says if we want to take the derivative d dx of anything raised to an exponent, what we can always do to get the derivative is we move the exponent out front, and then the exponent shrinks by 1. This is an important property. You almost don't have to take the time to memorize it because we're going to use it so much that it will just become natural. But it is a good one to be very familiar with the polynomial shortcut. Here's how it works. Let's say we have the function f of x. Um, let's start simple. Let's say x to the seventh power. The derivative then, f prime of x, we move the 7 out front and reduce the exponent by 1. And we've got our solution for the derivative that fast. Similarly, we can make it a little more involved and say f of x equals uh, 4x cubed. To do the derivative, we'll again move the exponent out front 3 times. We're going to keep the 4 there. We're not doing anything with it because it's multiplied by the x and shrink the exponent by 1. Well, 3 times 4, that's just 12x squared for our derivative. 
quite often we'll skip the middle step in blue and go straight to the green step and just multiply 3 times the 4 to get our derivative. So let's do another example that's even more involved. Let's do negative 4x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 1. Taking our derivative of this function, we bring the exponent out front. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12x. Shrink the exponent by 1 to get squared. Minus 2 times 2 is 4x. Shrink the exponent by 1. We get the first power. Plus, bring the exponent of 1 out front. 5 times 1 is 5. Shrinking the exponent by 1 from 1 down to 0 means there's no x's left. And what about that constant of 1? Well, let's think about this. 1 really has 0 x's in front of it. So it's really 1 times x to the 0. And if we bring that exponent out front, we end up with 0 times x to the negative 1. But 0 times anything is just 0. And so that kind of gives us a corollary derivative formula that the derivative of any constant or any number is always going to be 0. So we don't have to do anything for the plus 1 because the derivative of 1 is 0. And our final derivative becomes negative 12x squared minus 4x plus 5. We can extend this rule even to take derivatives of things like 10 over x squared plus 3 over x minus 4 square root of x plus 2 times the cube root of x. We can still use our polynomial property or polynomial shortcut because we can rewrite this as a polynomial with exponents. What would move an x squared down to the denominator? A negative exponent. This is 10x to the negative 2 power. Plus, again, what moves the x down is a negative 1 power. This is 3x to the negative 1. Minus 4x. And what type of exponent creates a square root? We know square roots are just fractional exponents where the denominator is the index. This is 4x to the 1 half power. Plus 2x with a cube root, that's x to the 1 third power. And by changing this problem to a problem that has all x's to an exponent, we can now take the derivative by using our derivative property. 10 times negative 2 is negative 20. x to the, shrink the exponent by 1. It's now negative 3. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. x to the, shrink the exponent by 1, negative 2 power, minus 4 times a half is 2, x to the, we're shrinking the exponent by 1, which is 2 halves. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 half. Plus 2 times a third is 2 thirds. x to the 1 third minus 1 is 1 third minus 3 thirds, gives us a negative 2 thirds. And we've got our derivative. So this polynomial rule becomes very powerful to help us calculate all sorts of derivatives quite quickly. We're going to use it a lot throughout this course. And I want to look, though, before we wrap up at one application or use of the derivative, because the derivative gives us the tangent line. It can help us calculate an important concept in business called the marginal change. And marginal change is really saying, what is the effect of one more?
Here's what I mean by that. If I've got f of x equals 3x squared plus 11x plus 1, and I want to compare how much growth is there between the 10th value and the 11th value. Well, if we plug 10 in, we have 3 times 10 squared plus 11 times 10 plus 1. Putting that in our calculator, we have 300 plus 110 plus 1 is 411. For the 11, we have 3 times 11 squared plus 11 times 11 plus 1. That comes out to 485. And so from going from 10 to 11 to get one more, our actual growth, subtracting them, is 485 minus 411, which is 74. That process takes quite a bit of steps and a, quite a bit of time to actually calculate. Let's do something different instead. Let's look at the derivative. The derivative of 3x squared plus 11x plus 1, we can quickly see as 6x plus 11 using our polynomial rule. Then we want to know what happens to one more at 10. Well, 6 times 10 is 60, plus 11 is 71. And you notice 71 is very close and much quicker to get than the 74. And usually when we're talking about marginal change and the effect of one more, close is usually good enough. So if close is good enough, why not do the quicker and easier method of taking the derivative and plugging in the 10 to see what one more, how one more would impact the result? And so we're going to use this marginal change idea that the derivative gives us a really good idea of what one more is going to do to the function. So if the function is 2x squared minus 7x plus 3, and I want to approximate the increase from 20 to 21. Well, it's going to be a lot quicker to just say, let's take the derivative using our polynomial rule, which becomes 4x minus 7, and then say at 20, the effect of one more is just plugging 20 into this function. 4 times 20 minus 7 is 80 minus 7, which is 73. We get approximately 73 more when we go from 20 to 21. It's not going to be perfect or exact, but it is going to be very close. And usually in the context of marginal change, close is good enough. So we've talked about the definition of a derivative and the all-important polynomial shortcut. Take a look at practicing those two things on the assignment today. Come to class with questions, and then we'll look at some more applications of how we can use the derivative in class. We'll see you then.